Good day YouTube, down to bricks here. Today I'm bringing you a battle on the high seas. I've always been very interested in the galleons and the age of exploration, so I am super pumped to bring you this review face off. On the left we have the Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man Tell No Tales Silent Mary Ghost Ship. It is set 71042. It came out in 2017, has 2,294 pieces and has eight minifigs. And with the cannons blasting on the right, we have the advanced model set 10210, the Imperial flagship. It is a 2010 set, has 1,664 pieces and comes with nine minifigs. So we do have heaps to get through to review these two huge sailing ships. So I may cut corners here and there just to speed things up a bit. Things like just showing you a quick view of the minifigures. But I will go into all of the details of the ships themselves. I had quite a few questions for both of these models going into this face off and I will cover all of that in the wrap up of the video so please stick around for that and of course I will be doing some direct side by side comparisons as well. Just before we get started please go and hit the like button if you enjoy these videos why not subscribe while you're there as well but let's get started with the Silent Mary. Before we get on to the ship itself, we do get a few accessories that come with it as well. Some brooms, pistol, and we do get a ship in a bottle. That is a nice piece. We do get these fantastic ghost sharks. So we get two of these. Very nice. Great printing. Get printing. A little bit on each side and they really are cool love these sharks and we do get this rowboat as well so we get a couple of oars just left on the table we do get this book so this is a, a printed piece and if you open it up we even get a printed tile on the inside so that's a very nice piece as well. And now with our mini figs, of course we have Jack Sparrow. Some very nice printing on this mini fig. All of these mini figs have great printing. The hair piece, the bandana, it's just all over. Great printing. And if I take that off, we do have an alternate face print as well we have Henry Henry dear Henry and he's probably one of the more basic or probably is the most basic minifig of this set and we do get alternate face print as well and we get Karina and I love the dress print that is very nice she has her sextant there let's get rid of that and take that off so we can have a bit better look at the torso print and alternate face print the other mini mini figs we have we have lieutenant lazaro so here's the lieutenant and have a look at that printing that is very very cool printing on the torso down onto the legs look at that face printing printing on the hat as well printing on the back of the torso printing on the back of the head and all over a great minifig we have Captain Salazar and again Great, great printing. Possibly my favourite minifig here. Very nice. We have the the clear minifig head. Let me just try and get that off. Clear minifig head with printing on it. Great hairpiece. That's just very cool. 
but yeah, just awesome printing on Captain Salazar. And we have two officers. So we have Officer Santos, and it has this these ghost legs. Again, very nice printing. And we have Officer Magda. Where's he down here? And he actually has mini fig legs, but we get a clear leg. So that is pretty cool. And again, very nice printing. And now on to the ship itself. And first up, the play features. So you can lift up the side of the hull here and take your shark and you can clip them in underneath like so, and you can store your two sharks away. Now you can also get them ready for a quick launch and you can actually swivel them out a little bit like that and that sort of holds the side of the hull up a little bit there. And underneath on the front section here, you have a hinge piece that you can lift, lift up and that actually keeps the whole hull open like so. One of the interesting things about this build is building it around these large hinge pieces. And the idea of those is that you can actually hinge the front of the hull up. And you just need to lift it up like so. You can lift it up a couple of clicks. And that way you can actually get the whole front of the bow lifting up. While we're looking at the front here, Let's have a look at the minifigure we get for the figurehead. So we do get a very nice figurehead, some nice printing on that minifig, and we could just sit that back up there. I do like the addition of the crow's nest. I thought that was a very nice touch. And just take note of the very nice detail, the degrading ship. It's all broken down. It has some very good elements to it to help show that breaking down. We do have an anchor on each side as well. And of course we have these very weathered sails. One other play feature is the collapsible mast. It's actually just on a ball joint. So you can actually, without having it fall off like that, you can fold that down and have it that it's falling in the ocean. That is a very cool look. Looking at the back of the ship, we do have an adjustable rudder. You can move that back and forth, and it really is just fantastic, the amazing level of detail. And now just a bit more of a run through. You can really appreciate the level of detail. Great design for the cannons. We have the bell there as well. Up on the poop deck. No details on the inside, it is all just hollow. Just more details of things breaking off the ship, more detail there. And just a quick look underneath, just to show you a bit more of those features. So there is the hinge up under there that you can move down to close up the hull and the attachment for the shark and of course we do get these stands for it as well it does make it rather hard to move around though when you do need to shift it onto the majestic imperial flagship let's start with the minifigs so we get four of these Imperial officers, so they are all the same, although each one does have a unique face print. 
So that is one, two, very nice printing on these guys. We do get back printing with the satchel as well. That's a nice print. This is number three. He's a little bit older, this guy. Number four is here. This one's got a bit of a goatee. And we do get the Imperial Officer. Same printing. And of course we get the Governor. He has some very nice printing. A little bit of printing on the back. We do get the governor's daughter. And that is very, very nice printing on that dress. It's got a bit of a gold shine to it. Very, very nice. And we do get rear printing and a rear torso, sorry, a rear face print as well. We do get Captain Brickbeard, he's been captured. That's a cool looking minifigure. He's got his wooden leg, great torso print. And we do get one other pirate as well. Get a little shorty here. So pretty standard fare for a pirate print. Great face printing on this guy. Check that out. Very cool. As for play features it's more just having your minifigs climb over the mast, having a bit of a battle with the pirates, removing all of the sails here, all of the decks, lifting the decks off and playing inside, inside the captain's quarters as well. So we'll go in and have a look at all that. To remove the deck, it comes off in two main parts. So if we just have a bit of a wiggle here, we should be able to lift one off here. And it's not gonna come for me, there it goes. And this whole back section comes off. The whole thing is one piece and of course you do have the captain's quarters down there so we'll get in there and have a look in a moment and we have our mast there and then this piece here lifts off as well and I'll just give it a wiggle and that whole thing comes off and this has the two masts on it what I like about this is you can actually lift this hatch up like so. When you've got it on the boat you can lift that up and you can get somewhat you can get down in here and adjust the cannons and that when you're having a bit of a play. Obviously if you've got smaller hands than me it makes it a little bit easier. That over here and now we have the entire hull of the ship the easiest thing is for me just to take it off the tripod here and give you a look through the hull. So, got the bulkhead there. Lots of little bits and pieces in here. Got all the food storage. We have knives and pots and pans. Got the chicken roasting there some weapons and of course all of our cannons so you get four cannons and these are the cannons so you can actually remove them and you can stretch them back and fire the lego pieces out of them if you wish kinda wish you did get eight cannons that would have been good to have four on each side but you do only get the four in total. We have our crates for the cannonballs, 
have one on each side. We have the pokers here. I'll just drop them out, put that back in. And up the front here, we do have a door. You can open that door. So there's the brig. And you've got a rat in there. And this is a very cool plate feature with the anchor. So it's actually all connected through here. And you can wind it on top to let your anchor out. You can let that out quite a way. And then you can wind it back up. So I do like that. That's pretty cool. And up the front here. We do have our shark for the figurehead. So one of the other things that I really like is the design of this hull. So the way it's designed with brick-based pieces here, and it just comes off these big bulk hull pieces, and it's a pretty good transition up onto the hull here just using these slope pieces. So it's slope pieces on a plate, and it's just connected down with a Technic pin. So I thought that was a very clever technique. While we're having a look on the inside, you can lift up this entire piece to get into the captain's quarters here. And not a lot of detail, but what they've done is rather cool. And we do have the two doorways leading out onto the deck. Just having a once over and a look at those sails. We have some flags on top of the mast, and we do have this printed, so just a plastic piece with a flag. Look down onto the deck and a look at the detail along the side here. There's our gun ports. And to finish off with a look at the back of the ship it is one fantastic model well now it's time to have a look at these two great ships side by side so a look from the back and you can actually see the hull height of the Silent Mary, the back of the ship is high, and that's to do with the extra decks. And if I go up again and just show you on the back, so what I've done is I've actually pushed both of these ships right up against the wall, so the front is touching the wall up there. And if I look at the back here, you can see the difference in the length of the two models and again if I come down to get level with the mass you can see how much taller the Imperial flagship is one in front of the other that gives you a good idea of the size Does look pretty good looking through the sails at the Silent Mary. And I look dead on, really shows off the awesome sails on both sets. And just a better look at the fronts here.
in one final look with the Silent Mary in front. It really does hide the Imperial flagship with that extra height. If we come up, that is a beautiful sight. So as the Battle of the High Seas comes to an end, the smoke haze drifts and the tattered sails blow in the wind, which set came out on top. Well, let's delve into that a little bit deeper. The first question is, does the Imperial flagship hold the mantle of being the largest Lego sailing ship? And in physical size, Yes, it does. And just looking at this image here, I mean, it really is an imposing craft. How did Lego do with the realism of an actual sailing ship? I've got to say the deck structure on the Silent Mary is probably more accurate than the Imperial flagship. And by, I am by no means any sort of expert. You guys watching would know more about it than me. But the deck, deck structure on the Silent Mary, so we have our poop deck, our quarter deck, our main deck, and our fore deck, which is pretty much the, the structure of, of the deck layout for these ships. So the Imperial flagship is a little bit lacking in that regard. But of course, there were ships with that deck layout as well. So I really don't think they're too far off the mark. The mast layout, I think, is very accurate on both ships possibly a little bit more on the flagship with the rear mizen mast but overall i think lego did a commendable job so minifigures well this is where it gets rather difficult because the minifigs on the silent mary are absolutely superb the detail i just absolutely love the print on these new minifigs and then we go up against the minifigs from seven years ago. So the detail's not quite there, but they are outstanding minifigs. These Imperial minifigs, they are very iconic. The accessories, the number of minifigs, wow, it's, it's definitely tough. And I think I'm gonna have to go with the Imperial flagship minifigs just because of how classic those minifigs are. And now let's talk about the actual build itself. Now, I did build these two sets pretty much back to back. So my build experience, I've got to say with the Imperial flagship, even though they say it is an advanced model, I did feel like it was more straightforward than putting the Silent Mary together. One thing I really do love about the Imperial flagship is the upper area of the bow. And I did point that out in the close-up. I really like how they designed that. I think that was very well done and ties in very nicely with those big bow pieces. With the Silent Mary, there is lots of very interesting build techniques and it's a lot of fun just adding all that detail. Now, of course, you know, we're looking at 600 odd pieces more and a lot of that is just in the detail and for the overall build experience I think I have to give it to the Silent Mary. Before I go on to pick my own personal favorite I just want to talk about my favorite things from each of the models. So let's start with the Silent Mary and as I just talked about it's the detail. It's the detail of that set that is the highlight for me and I've got to say which I haven't mentioned the sharks, those sharks are very cool and they are a great addition. For the Imperial flagship, the highlight for me is the sails. Just the, the look of those sails, the sails in full flight on the mast, I just think that looks absolutely spectacular. It is such an eye-catching set and I'm just gonna lead straight in to say that the Imperial flagship is my pick out of these two models. I think it is absolutely fantastic and it is an awesome addition to anybody's collection. I highly recommend it. It is very expensive. I do understand that. So that just leads me to say, 
come on Lego, why don't we get more sets like this? I mean, honestly, I think Lego could release a big ship like this probably every two years or so, two to three years. I know I would really appreciate it. What do you guys think about that? I just think they're absolutely fantastic and it's something that Lego really needs to do more of. So that's my thoughts in a rowboat. What do you guys think? I would love to hear from you. Please leave it in the comments. Those questions I asked, all your thoughts, put it below. Everybody would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you. While you're down there, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss out the next time I post a video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did bringing it to you. This was a real special face-off, something I really, really enjoyed. Just like to thank everybody for taking the time to watch, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.